Hi, thanks for joining me for a, another update. Uh, this one I thought I would do slightly differently after watching a TV program last night. Um, it's inspired me to talk more about the way I am. Um, the program was on BBC Two last night. Um, it was called Chris Packham, Asperger's and Me. And it's something that I recognise in myself quite a lot. But for so many years, didn't. And it was so nice to see a programme talking openly about Asperger's and not in a way that was derogatory or condescending. So, as you know, I do uh, some writing and this, this channel and blog so I thought I'd just spend a little bit of time just touching on a couple of probably key times in my life that maybe you'll be able to relate to as well. Um, probably didn't start investigating the Asperger's route till a number of years ago where my uncle got in touch with me and suggested some of the family do an Asperger's test as he had completed one and scored quite high with I won't say symptoms because they're not symptoms, it's just the way you are. Things that come naturally to me or someone possibly with Asperger's is quite different to somebody else. And there are so, so many different degrees of um, not only autism, but Asperger's. So what one individual senses or feels or uh, triggers a behaviour. Uh, may be completely different to another individual and from a child to an adult and certainly as an adult you have those years behind you where you've almost learnt to uh, not just live with it but disguise it, work with it, adapt with it um, It's some days brought you down very low and to despair and yet other times it's probably been the fire within me, the creative energy that I have. Um, I haven't been officially diagnosed with Asperger's because um, I'm not one for confronting these situations or even really going out into the doctors to talk about what I'm feeling and the prospect of having tests or seeing different people and um, I do for other medical conditions if I needed to have a checkup of course you know it's part of life but if I can avoid any of these situations I will so it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation but I think you know in yourself where as I describe it, I often, for most of my life, have felt like a triangle in a round world. And um, 
not very unhappy life. Uh, certainly I've gone through stages of um, sadness or depression or frustration or anger, uh, like many of you do. Um, but I thought it might be helpful to myself and you know, I hope to others also to recognise that you're not alone and that it's okay to be a completely individual and that it's okay to do what helps you, what works for you may not work for somebody else. Um, so I think I think I'm going to break it down into just a couple of sections. There are, there are so many incidents that I could talk about or moments. Um, but uh, we'll probably touch on those with one of my social medias on Twitter or Instagram. But for the purpose of these videos, uh, I think I'll, this video will continue on and we'll talk about, uh, as a child, how I felt, um, particularly when it came to school or friends. I'll include hobbies into that because uh, it's almost my survival mechanism. And then later on in life, there's the prospect of university or interviews. jobs, not put in there day to day because of the fact that is sometimes <laughs> the biggest, biggest hurdle that you may get through one day, uh, but there is always another day. And There's a whole side that I could also talk about that when I had my daughter, I struggled with the what I should be doing and where I should be going and the interaction because everything in my head and my body shouted at me that I didn't want to be interacting, I didn't want to be a part of this this almost group seemed to be the normal for others. Um, it certainly didn't feel normal for me and I had much rather with my daughter when she was growing up. Be um, one-to-one -one making and creating and reading stories and when I look back um, and obviously she socially interacted with others when she was with other peers and friends and her father. Um, for me, I think I certainly went down the quieter avenue, but it is what worked for me and worked for us, and I don't think it's done her any harm. Um, it's funny when you start looking back at situations that at the time you were battling with or angry with or confused with, and I was very hard on myself and I went through some very dark times certainly uh, now realising it's just that uh, I'm perhaps like many others wired up just that little bit differently and the third video I'm going to touch on 
business that I do now. And what's worked for me and what worked, what's worked against me and how I live with it, how I basically mould it to fit into how I am. Not conventional by any sense. Um, and completely wouldn't suit somebody else, I imagine. Or it may well, I don't know. Um, so, that could be the third video. So, as this is a, an ASMR video, I will obviously just talk through it very gently and very softly. And it's funny really because I first probably recognised ASMR, not that I knew it was ASMR when I was a child, but I probably tapped into triggering my senses when I was at school in a lesson. Um, perhaps the teacher was writing something on the board or the teacher was reading a book and I would watch, not deliberately, but you can hear all the noises around and you find yourself zooming onto somebody that's playing with the corner of their book to pass time or rotating a pencil, doodling on a page, and I used to find it a way to almost comfort myself. I felt happy and relaxed when sort of the tingling head sensation would occur. It was peaceful, it was familiar, it was escapism. It was me being happy within myself. And all these years later, obviously now we recognise the term ASMR. And it's something that I often still tap into when I'm feeling um, anxious or, or even just as, as many do, just needing to get to sleep or a bit stressed. But when I was a child and uh, I grew up in, in Holland and then I came back to England, I think it's when I came back to England that I felt more isolated, I felt more different when I was in a different country, it, I was expected to be different so I didn't fight life quite so much, although still I always through the whole of my school years had problems getting into school, remaining in school. Um, I just always wanted to rather be at home on my own, my own with my own thoughts, plans. I would often watch programs on television that would inspire me to make something or plan what I would do with the rest of my life, whether it be setting up a business or I was going to be a successful designer or a successful artist or always avenues of escapism. Very content, very happy in the world that I created in my mind at that time. Uh, a successful stationery designer or an interior designer and on the days that I didn't go into school or even at the weekends 
Uh, I was always moving my furniture around in my bedroom. Literally wardrobes, chests of drawers, beds. I'd have them, you know, propped up on my back, moving them around, around. Um, almost like I was making a den all the time. And I was very happy doing that. And I get it just right. It would feel cosy. Um, I even put some beads up on my bedroom door at one point just to isolate me a little bit more. Um, when I had the opportunity to have the room decorated, it was It's exciting to be able to, you know, actually express myself with paint patterns on the wall as well. But it wasn't a case of just doing it for an hour or something when I got stuck into anything that I set my mind to. For all of my growing up years, and I am even very much guilty of it now, I can just go for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours just doing... something that I just suddenly feel passionate about, lost in the world that I create. And as I say, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, um, because it's certainly driven me forward and kept me focused. So, um, like Chris Packin said last night on his programme, you know, it's kind of helped to sculpt and create the person that he is, and I do completely relate to that. The prospect of when I went to school, being around other children, and I used to watch them idly chat and buzz around and um, playing groups, um, it just filled me with fear. Absolutely filled me with fear to to just be in this great, busy, bustling, uh, other kids were laughing, you know, that it just seemed to be coming to them naturally. And of course, looking back, um, there's probably handfuls of people that were absolutely in the same situation as me uh, when it came to getting picked for sports events. You know, I was always probably one of the last ones because I was an introvert. Um, I knew I was probably actually quite capable of doing uh, some of the things. And the same when it came to... my show when they were arranging and um, with the Christmas show I remember so much wanting to come out of myself and be chosen to be one of the lead characters and I wanted to express myself with either the singing or the, to learn the words but I knew I wouldn't get picked, I'd just be picked as um, some of the cast in the background, which I was, because I just didn't know how to apply myself, to put myself forward. It scared me. Um, I do feel I missed out quite a lot there. At school, I tended to only have a best friend, uh, someone that accepted me for who I was. And when I did make a friendship, uh, what I would say is about anybody with Asperger's, is they're very loyal and they'll give 100%. And I certainly did to um, 
one particular friend that I had when I came back from Holland and in my lower school. Um, but unfortunately she was killed and I know how completely lost I felt and alone more than I had ever ever been before and I was happy to spend time on my own again and I think that's where my first thoughts for writing came about because while I was doing anything really uh, my head would be somewhere else thinking up stories, thinking of ways to escape um, not great big plots and plans, it could even be just the simplicity of a children's story but just, I'd love, I'd love the charm of them, the warmth, the just the um, just the connection that I made with some of the some of the characters and now certainly as I've grown older I do find even when I watch some programs on TV regularly they uh, almost become like friends and that must sound very silly and almost very shallow but it's because I know they can't do me any harm and I know they're not going to be disappearing and I know I have, don't have to socially interact and I know that it's safe and it's routine and routine is what I uh, love sick days off, off of school and often lots of catching up to do which I did quite easily and I'm sure if I was at school a bit more and had applied myself a bit more I would have got better grades but I got the O-levels that I needed and I had no intention of going to university to prolong the agony of school um, But I guess I found a way to make it work for me and I hope um, I hope that I didn't say I hope that I didn't let myself down but I don't think I did no, not all the time. I, I feel cheated a bit. But there's things that I wanted to do that I could that maybe I should have done that I never applied myself enough because I was always running scared quite a lot. And I don't want that for other people. And that's why I'm probably doing uh, this channel, the books, or this video certainly to just simply say that uh, if you do feel like you are a triangle in a round world it's okay you do what you have to do to get through your day to be happy to be content to feel safe and if you want to spend a couple of hours on your own creating making something, learning something. Uh, people might think you're a little bit strange. Um, it's okay. It's okay. So I think that's the end of the, uh, the first video that I'm going to talk about uh, Asperger's. And I'd like to say thank you obviously very much for joining me. And I hope you can join me on my next video where I'm going to 
talk a bit about how I dealt with interviews, kind of getting to the stage of needing to go out to work and spread your wings slightly. So, thanks again and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.